And now we get to the good stuff. We're about to hit the hills and demonstrate how to descend long steep grades using just the engine brake in a truck equipped with an automated manual transmission. In this case, the Volvo iShift. In the first video in this series, we learned what happens to drum brakes when they get hot. In part two, we learned how to check our brakes prior to heading down a long grade. In part three, we learned about how to judge a hill for steepness and how to use iShift's manual mode to increase the effectiveness of the engine brake. In this video, our chief instructor Andy Roberts of Mountain Transport Institute in Castlegar, British Columbia, is going to talk me down what's known locally as the Blueberry Paulson Hill. We made two downhill runs for this video, one loaded to about 80,000 pounds or 36,000 kilograms, the other loaded to 102,000 pounds or about 46,000 kilos, just to show that the technique is the same, but we use lower gears. So let's get started. These videos are made possible by Volvo Trucks North America. The first thing you need to do is assess the grade and decide which gear to use. This hill, 6 miles or 10 kilometers at an average of 7%, had signs advising 40 kilometers or 25 miles per hour for trucks. That may or may not be the right speed for our load, but it's a starting point. We started from a stop in a brake check area at the top of the hill and we coasted up to speed using light engine brake while letting the transmission upshift to fifth gear. When operating on interstate type hills, when you might come over the top of a hill at 65 miles an hour or 105 kilometers an hour, that means you'll need to use the engine brake to slow the truck to no faster than the recommended speed right at the top of the hill. If there's no posted recommended speed, then about half the posted speed would provide a safe margin for an 80,000 pound truck. Heavily loaded triaxles or B-trains should probably shoot for about one third of the posted speed to begin with and then adjust the speed according to the grade. So Jim, we're, we're gonna head down a hill and it starts at about a 6% grade and carries on up to an 8% grade. We are loaded basically a five axle load, 80,000 pounds. So we need to decide what gear we think is going to allow us to safely descend this grade without the use of service brakes. Okay. So Volvo iShift 12 speed, uh, what do you think we're going to need? Uh, top of my head, I'm going to say six or seven probably. Okay. So to be on the safe side, then we should probably start in fifth or sixth. So, six so a lot right of times, now. and this fools a lot of people, is the sign says 7%, but it's not immediately 7%. So you're gonna be a little bit slower to start with. And, and as you've been doing, which uh, people might not be able to notice, is you've been toggling your engine brake between the three different settings. Correct, yeah. Right? And so uh, you can keep your RPM up a bit uh, while you're doing that. So as it stands now, we're in sixth gear, and I seem to be able to toggle between the second and third position on the engine brake. Okay. And that's giving me full range of RPM yeah. in this gear. So with this hill, as you can see, we're just ahead of us here, we're gonna get steeper. Yeah. So this is likely the right gear because when we get steeper, we're probably gonna spend most of our time in the third setting. Okay. Okay, what speed are we doing, Jim? Uh, right now we're doing about uh, 30 kilometers an hour. 32, 33 kilometers. Okay. <laughs> so the sign indicates we're going to go to 8% and you can see how just up ahead it, it actually definitely does get steeper. It's visibly steeper, yep. yeah. So now I'm starting to creep up. My road speed's now about 35 kilometers and my engine speed's at 19, 1900 RPM. So I've got basically 200 RPM to go. Yeah. And your setting just, is two or three? Just going through 2000. I think I'm in two right now. Yeah, there's three. So now I'm in three. Yeah, and we're, we're the decelerating part. now. So I'm going to put it back to two. I guess I was in one earlier. Okay. So then, in that case, we could probably go to a higher gear because we're we're holding back on the steepest part at, and we're actually slowing down at the number two setting. So we're going too slow right now. We're going slower than we need to. Yes. Okay. So let's go up a gear. There you go. Okay, now we're in seventh. Yeah. Pull her back into manual. And now I'll go to our higher setting. Because we're in a strange truck, it's it's gonna be a bit of a guessing game. 
when when you drive the same truck all the time, you're going to learn for the typical load you have and the engine, the amount of holdback your engine has, what gear you're going to descend a, yeah. a, a 6% or an 8% graded. In the previous sequence, you saw me settling into the right gear with the right engine brake setting needed for this load on this hill. As the steepness of the grade changes in the next sequence, you'll see me upshift one gear and I'll toggle between the three engine brake settings to maintain my road speed. On the shallower sections, I'll switch between positions one and two, and on the steeper sections, I'll use positions two or three. Okay, so now we're, if this was aviation, we'd call it a stabilized approach. Yeah. We're at uh, 40 kilometers and 1900 RPM. Okay. Seventh gear. But we're still only on the second setting, right? Yeah, and we're on uh, position number two. Okay, so let's see what happens when we go to the third setting. So we're in position number three on the engine brake now and we're decelerating. So we want to see what it's going to stabilize at because that's going to tell us whether we can go up one more gear. Yeah, the I way think, it's slowing, I think we can. I think we're good. Do you want to go up to eight? Yeah, let's go okay, to eight. Let's go to eight gear. So now there we're you go. Eight. Eight. Oh, we're back, back in, the, in manual. The, whole, the manual mode. Onto the third setting. Okay, that's setting number three. So what's our road speed now? 50 kilometers an hour. 50K, and, yeah. And uh, 1,700 on the engine. And we haven't touched the service brakes at all. I haven't touched the brakes, no. Yeah. So I'd say this is our gear. I'm in For this third, load, absolutely. The yeah. setting right now. Yeah. As we level out here a bit. It's going to level out a bit and we're going to cross a bridge and then and then we'll get steep again and, and we'll be able to see uh, when we get on that grade again to confirm that that's actually where we want to be. So should I give it uh, or take it back to number two position to speed up a little bit? Yeah, I would. where I'm at. Yeah. No, I would uh, toggle the switch. Toggle between between your settings to keep your RPM up higher. And, it, and the important thing to remember, especially for people that are concerned about fuel economy, is that when the engine brake's operating on these engines, you're not burning any fuel. So the fact the engine brake works better at higher RPM at the 2000 or 2100 RPM, up to that sort of range, gives us a stronger holdback. We don't yep. burn any fuel at all. So we used all that fuel to climb the hill, and now going back down the other side, we, we get to gain some of that back because we get to descend without the use of any, any fuel at all. So there's no no fuel economy penalty to running at 1800 RPM. None at all. Not when the engine brake's activated. Okay. So now we're in second position, I believe, on the engine brake. And yeah. we haven't changed. This is nice and consistent here for this grade, this weight, and this speed. But every situation will be different. The driver will have to find this. Always going to have to find it. Yeah. And, and never do they construct a grade that's perfectly consistent all the <laughs> no, way down, right? No. So so you're always going to have to adjust a little bit here and there. So you got a traffic light just around, just literally past this sign here. You're going to have to stop. Right here? Yeah. Okay, so I am cheating and using the uh, foot brake at this point. Yeah, and, and that's fine. The foot brakes are there to stop. Yeah. Or if we needed to, to slow us down for a downshift. But the biggest thing is, is they're not there to uh, to hold the vehicle back going down the hill. And because I haven't touched the brake coming down the hill, I've got lots of brake yeah. to use in a relatively short notice like that. And it, it could have been possible for us to come around a corner and catch up to uh, somebody pulling a fully loaded super train, which in Canada is loaded up to 140,000 pounds. Yeah. And they'd be substantially slower than us. There's a bridge about halfway down the Blueberry Paulson Hill. The road here was reduced by construction to a single lane controlled by a traffic light. Because I hadn't used the service brakes at all on that section of the hill, stopping for the traffic on the bridge wasn't a problem. The engine brake was doing all the work. But there's one more thing to consider here, traction. The road here was bare and dry, but on snow and ice, you'd have to be a little more careful with the engine brake. After we crossed the bridge, we descended another steeper section and then the road leveled out. That's where I let the truck run out to 80 kilometers or 50 miles per hour in 11th gear with some light engine brake. As we approached a tight curve, I downshifted to 8th gear using the B position on the engine brake control. On the driver display in the dashboard, I could see one or two downward pointing arrows beside the number indicating the gear I was in. 
Those arrows were telling me how many gears I could safely drop based on the road speed and the engine speed. So that was a six mile trip down a 7% grade with 80,000 pounds. The actual running time from the trip from start to finish was 22 minutes. I used the engine brake in a series of up and down shifts as needed to keep the engine RPM high so the engine brake would be at its most effective. I let it run up to 50 miles per hour at one point on a flat section and I was down to 25 miles per hour on the steepest section of the hill. I used the service brakes only once to stop for the construction at the bridge. When we got to the bottom, the brake drums were still cold to the touch. In other words, I had retained 100% of the truck's braking capacity all the way down, so if I had to, I could have successfully made a full stop any time with complete confidence. For the final lesson in this mountain driving series using automated manual transmissions, we're going to run that same hill again under a different load that's 25% heavier. We'll drive it exactly the same way, but at a lower speed and in a lower gear. We'll let this video run out, but watch the comments along the bottom of the screen for details about our speed, gear selection, and engine brake settings. What's our gross weight now? Well, we've gained about 25% over with the 80,000, so we're about 102.5. So 40, 46,500 kilograms in Canada, 102,500 pounds in the US. Okay. So from a practical point of view, that means I'm probably have to go, probably gonna have to go slower. If we're not gonna use the service brakes, I would agree. So we had sort of settled on eighth gear with that other load. Yep. So we're gonna need, I think, to be at least seven. All right, so I'm in ninth now. Let's get down to seventh. Seventh gear. And I'm in third on the engine brake. We're still on a flat part here. We're not really into the hill yet. Yeah. So I'll just let this. Walk so it's in, in manual. it's in manual. I'm in seventh gear and I'm in number one position on the engine brake. So we're just at the fairly flat part of the hill. And we're going to get into the steeper grade here in just a minute. So I'm probably going to have to ratchet the engine brake up a little bit. Uh, but I can feel the extra weight. We're definitely heavier. Yeah, it's definitely pushing already. So I just set the engine brake to number two position and we're holding it 1400. So well under what we need at the moment. And as it gets steeper, Jim, I would just let it climb and see where it ends up. And, see where it and goes, yeah. if it's going to go past 22,000, then we'll have to notch it up to three. But We are gaining a bit of speed here. So 1,700 now, 40 kilometers. Still in number two positions. So I got one more position to go on the engine brake. But it's happy here. Just put it up to number three. And we're decelerating in number three. So I think that's going to put us in good shape because the hill does get a little bit steeper down here. Yep. So if we're holding in number two right now, then uh, having that number three available on that steeper part is, should be just what we want. Yeah, right now I can toggle back and forth between two and three. And I'm going to maintain that. So 1900 now we're holding. Speed's not changing. We're doing about 45 kilometers an hour. So that's about 28 miles an 28 hour. 28 miles an hour, yep. We're coming into the steeper part of the hill and I'm gaining a bit of speed. So I'm going to pull it into number three now. Third position, we're holding 1900 now. Slowing us a little bit still. But this is pretty comfortable. Yeah, and it's quite acceptable if it slows too much to just toggle it back just and toggle forth it back. a little bit. Yeah. If we go a gear higher, we're going to be too fast. We'd be on the service brakes. 
So now as it's climbing up, you can always notch it back. Right? So what are we at now there, about 2,000? 2,000, yep. 50K-ish? Not quite a 50 yet, but I'm in third position on the engine brake. I haven't got any more there, so. But she's holding at 21, not going above 21, which is the cutoff. That's our red line. So at this point, if it does push beyond that, if we we have to make the, uh, the odd brake light application to check the brakes, it's not gonna be a big deal? Yeah, I just gave it a couple of pounds application pressure there. But definitely feel the difference in that extra weight. Oh yeah. We came down this hill on the other trailer at 80,000 pounds. We were in eighth gear. Yeah. Coming down here. So I just give it another little brake application just on and off for a couple of seconds, really light, maybe five, 10 PSI. And that brought me back down below 2000 RPM. I could do that all day long without risking elevating my brake temperatures. If it starts to get too frequent, if the if the needle keeps pushing past quite quickly, then you're gonna need to consider a, a downshift to a lower gear. In this case, our heel is, is starting to run out anyway, so I think yeah. we're gonna be fine. That's sort of the key. If a driver knows the hill, you've got that ability, but on a hill that you didn't know, uh, you know, would you be downshifting there or just let it run out to a flatter spot? Really, I base my decision on how fast it's it's accelerating past the 2000 mark. So in this case, we did have the sign at the top indicating what the grades were and how steep they were and approximately how long they were. So even for somebody from outside the area, if they did stop and do their brake check and, and read the sign, that's going to give them a, a pretty good idea of what they're faced with ahead. Yeah. Um, to help make those decisions. Not every brake check is gonna give you that information, but a lot of the ones in British Columbia do anyway. So we're coming into a construction zone now. There's gonna be a red light stop sign down here. We know that. Uh, but if you didn't know that, and we're coming down here uh, and you were not taking proper precautions near the top, you could be perspiring a little bit right now. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, somebody that descends the grade too fast, they're gonna build a lot of heat in their brakes very quickly because they're gonna be needing to check their speed with their brakes. If if you find that your engine's pushing past the 2100 RPM, then of course one of the concerns becomes we wanna protect the engine, we don't wanna damage it, over rev the engine and have the engine, literally in some cases it could uh, disintegrate. So, some drivers will want to shift to a higher gear, but shifting to a higher gear is, is a, a very short-term solution. It's going to give you more speed, it's going to require more brakes, and it's going to put you in more trouble. So really it's having your brakes cold enough if you've selected the wrong gear, that you can make a single brake application, get your speed way down, probably to a thousand RPM or less, in order to downshift to that lower gear so that you can regain control of the vehicle without the use of the service brakes to carry on. Hopefully you've managed your speed and your brake appropriately from the top. You can do that close to the top and realize the mistake you've made before Absolutely. you get into some serious trouble. Yeah. So now we're coming into a place where we have to stop. There's traffic here at the bottom of this. Uh, my brakes are nice and cool. I barely used them. So perfectly safe perfectly under control here, absolutely no problem. And if, if you find yourself in a scenario uh, where you're not confident in how to, uh, to make that downshift, then if your brakes are cold again, you can make a single application and literally bring the vehicle to a stop if you needed to yep. and select a lower gear. Uh, biggest mistake drivers make is, is when they're in too high a gear to carry on and hope they're gonna make the bottom of the hill because um, that generally ends pretty badly. So with the heavier load, I was running one gear back in seventh instead of eighth like I did with the lighter load. I also ran the engine brake mostly in the third position and at higher RPM. In fact, I got up to about 2150 RPM a couple of times. 
At that point, I made a light brake application just to slow the truck a little bit rather than upshift. I touched the brake three times on the way down, but at less than a 10 PSI application pressure and only for a couple of seconds. That's just enough to drop the engine revs back to about 1700. All still perfectly under control and with an excellent safety margin. It's easy to say that's sitting here, but to a new driver this experience could be intimidating. If they choose a certain speed and a certain gear, and then start to see traffic building up behind them on a two-lane highway such as the road we're on in this video, then there's some pressure there to speed up and get out of the way. Ignore that pressure and carry on with what you're comfortable doing. We do have some traffic lined up behind us, <clears throat> and because of the, the part of the world we're in where, where it's a single-lane road, that's going to happen from time to time. And uh, really, there's, there's not a lot you can do about that, and you can't allow those people uh, to determine how you're going to operate your vehicle. You, you need to operate it safely, and uh, in order to do that, uh, sometimes you're going to delay other people. Yeah, that does put a bit of pressure on the driver. Mountain driving need not be a terrifying experience if it's done properly. You need to appreciate the limitation of the brakes and use them sparingly, if at all, on hills. If you approach the hill properly and get slowed down at the top of the hill to a speed at which the engine brake can maintain a safe descent speed, you'll have no difficulty at all. Here are the key takeaways from this mountain driving video series. Consider the weight of the truck and the length and steepness of the hill when picking a speed at which to descend the hill. You're safer going too slow rather than too fast. With automated manual transmissions, pick a gear and use the manual mode to prevent the transmission from upshifting. Use the engine brake settings 1, 2 or 3 to maintain a steady, safe speed. If the engine speed is climbing too fast, you're probably going too fast. Slow down and downshift while the brakes are still cold. Ignore how fast other trucks might be driving, they could be a lot lighter than you are. Drive your truck on the hill. So I'm sure you've seen by now that driving in the mountains, your brakes are your friend. You really got to pay attention to the condition they're in and make sure they're working for you. We've gone through the whole thing now from, you know, in brake inspections, the uh, brake check area. We've talked about downhill descent techniques. We've talked about keeping it in the right gear, knowing what gear to put it in, how to use your engine brake. Basically, we've given you in these videos uh, a how-to on how to descend literally any mountain grade you're going to run into with any load. The whole idea is to keep the thing in a range where you can control the speed of the truck with just the engine brake. You start at the top of the hill with your brakes cold, and when you get to the bottom of the hill, your brakes are the same temperature. There's no need to use the service brakes when you're descending the hill properly with your uh, proper engine brake technique. And if you follow our advice in these videos, I think you'll find a, a pretty successful driving career ahead of you. You'll never have another problem on a mountain grade again. So best of luck to you, and catch you next time.